All right, welcome back to the True Footy Podcast, the truest football podcast you will see this side of Canning Highway, probably. <laughs> I don't know where your cat lives. Uh, but welcome, <laughs> we are back for episode 96, and I'm joined from sunny Middlesbrough in England. Uh, I'm joined by Drewzy, how are you, mate? Not in Middlesbrough, it's not sunny, but I'm good, thank you very much. I'm, I'm definitely far away from Middlesbrough. Not in Perth anymore, Jesse. We are quite literally on opposite sides of the world these days. Yes, I don't know why I thought it would be a comedic twist to say that you were in the wrong part of England. I thought it was <laughs> funny to me, but anyway. Um, yes, yeah, you're right, and it's the middle of winter there. I, I realise this is a bit of a milestone for the channel, Drews, because this is the first international True Footy podcast um, ever. And Well uh, done, mate. You've made it. My- You've made it. Thank you. Yeah, we wanted to go to an international market, and this <laughs> kind of counts. Yeah, um, but yeah, Drews, how are you, mate? Like, I, I think you and I have spoken more in the last like six weeks than we probably did for the second half of 2022. How, how are you going? I'm doing well, and I'm happy that you're doing well, Jesse. Because to I be honest, didn't say that. I've had to drag you through the mud the last two years, and all of a sudden, mm. in the last six weeks, you've got a fire lit up under your ass. you're motivated to make content again, true footy's looking exciting again, the mm. stocks are rising. Didn't realise um, it ever looked unexciting, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm doing well, just started up my uh, business, obviously, you know this, but um, yeah, so for the people that don't know, Drewsy's Athlete Academy, you've probably seen it all over the channel, because it's been promoted. Um, and yeah, Jesse's helping me out a lot with that. So yeah, the marketing side and the operations side, the money making side, Jesse's helping me there. And um, yeah, it's looking like the next year or so we're going to be working on that together and potentially True Footy as well. So um, I'm excited. Yeah, man, it's good. I just want to clarify for the audience um, that you dragging me through the mud is not a sexual euphemism. I just need to put that out there. Um, but, you know, it's good Why to... Why do you put this into people's minds? <laughs> <laughs> People will literally think that we're gay with, with the amount of fucking gay jokes that you make all the time. I am as straight as an arrow. I can't say the same about Jesse. Continue. Yeah, well, that's all right. This is an inclusive podcast for everyone. Um, I just wanted to clarify, just in case, because I think there has been this weird, like, sexual tension between us on camera, and, you know, people starting to ask the question, Drew. So, um, yeah, it's good to finally put that one to bed. Not in that way. Anyway. Um, look, and we, we have a lot to talk about in this pod. It is, um, it's a relatively big one, in a sense. I don't know how long it'll go for, but I just think the topics that we're going to discuss um, will be hopefully interesting to people that have any interest in either of our channels. Um, I want to talk about, like, you, you've just moved to the UK and you, you're still going with your YouTube stuff. You started a business. We'll talk about all of that. And then we can talk a little bit about, like, what my plans are, because I've been tight-lipped on that. Um, in fact, I didn't even mention anything was happening until the other day. Um, and, uh, yeah, then we'll talk about some footy somewhere along the way as well. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll get on to the Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, it is a true football podcast. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I guess, like, the last time we saw you, Drews, uh, on this podcast was, like, the day after the grand final or, like, the Monday after the grand final. Um, you had seen better days. You just uh, come off listen out, I think. Yeah. Wasn't that the yep. same weekend? Yeah, yeah. Your motivation was skyrocketing. Yeah. Um, I guess for the audience, what, what do you, why don't you just tell them like why you moved to the UK? So I've always wanted to travel. That was like the first seed that was planted. Um, so I did four years of uni exercise and sports science, um, got some industry experience and stuff. And I um, finished my undergrad, really enjoyed it. Just sort of, yeah, getting my knowledge up, getting my experience up in the industry, working with athletes. I got to work at the State Academy with guys that are now playing in the AFL um, state level athletes at, uh, Perth in the waffle as well. And then like, obviously the state teams that I got to run the entire programs for in the under 15s girls. And I was loving it. And I was like, yeah, sick. I want to work in elite sport. Um, the uni that I was with was affiliated with Frio and I was like, yeah, cool. There's a project there that I can take. I took it, signed the contract at Frio and I was like happy to pursue a career working for the club that I loved. Um, and then basically COVID ruined it all, couldn't go into the club. Um, and I was basically sat behind a desk for 10 months, hating every second of it. And I was, I wouldn't say I was in like a dark place, but I wasn't enjoying my life. There's a saying like, you're not experiencing suffering, you're suffering experience. And I was definitely just like having a shit time day to day. Um, and I just thought like, 
once I have the opportunity to rid myself of any responsibility and having to answer to people, I'm going to do that. So once I started my honours and found out that I wasn't going to uh, be able to go into Fremantle and started hating my life, I was like, cool, end of this year, I'm going to England. This time, oh, for Christmas Day, I want to be in England. Um, so yeah, booked my flights. Now I'm in England and yeah, basically just want a bit of freedom and I want to travel, see the world um, and to be able to do that at the same time as growing my business, uh, that's the plan. So yeah, work on my business and travel through Europe is basically why I'm here um, in a nutshell, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, it seems like it's been a pretty action-packed uh, first few months. Like You've went to Amsterdam, uh, came down with that eye infection. I hope that's cleared up by the way. <laughs> Um, then you, you went to a Celtic game as well. You've been to a Southampton game. You had a near fatal bout of hemorrhoids that you came through on as well. It's been, it's been, it's been an action packed couple of months. Um, why don't, why don't you give us some of the highlights of the, the travel side of things that you've been doing? And of course you can see this on Drew's channel. Uh, he's been doing vlogs, which I've really enjoyed by the way. Thank you. Uh, the highlights definitely haven't been the hemorrhoids. No, um, that was unfortunate. <laughs> um, so like my family over here. I have a great relationship with, um, like a big reason of why I wanted to move here is because like I've always been super tight with my family. So definitely one of the highlights has just been like getting to spend time with them. Um, because yeah, they're like some of the closest people in my life and living on the other side of the world from them for the last, like all throughout the pandemic, I haven't seen them obviously. So it's been great just spending time with them. Um, but yeah, going up to Scotland, that was great fun. The Scottish people are great, really friendly. Um, yeah, Glasgow, the Celtic game was great. Going to a pub on the Friday night, not knowing anyone and leaving, having met like six new people and just like singing songs all night. That was great fun. Yeah, obviously, as I said, the Celtic game. Um, what else have I done? Yeah, went to Amsterdam, watched Ajax. That was a lot of fun as well. I'm just, yeah, loving the football over here because um, I'm just an absolute sports nuff, as some of you know. But mainly it's just like meeting people that you feel like you've known your whole life even though you've just met them, like meeting new people, but you just get along like a house on fire. Um, yeah, <laughs> met, met a bird in our Amsterdam and I felt Ooh. like I fell in love with her and then she disappeared. So, you know, you hey, win some, you lose some. <laughs> I am sure that in Brooklyn, there is a big following of True Footy fans. She may be watching this <laughs> and you've just revealed well, yourself, is, mate. Yeah. Look, if she, if she sees this, she sees this. But um, <laughs> no, yeah, just meet, meet new people. Um, and traveling. I've got Germany lined up in three weeks time as well. So Oh baby, the, whereabouts? Yeah. Uh so flying to Munich, watching Bayern Munich play Augsburg in the Bundesliga. Um and then yeah, it's uh Munich, Stuttgart, Frankfurt, Cologne, Dortmund, Dusseldorf in the space of eight days. So lots of hostels, beers and sausages. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sounds like your average Saturday night. Yeah, it's um, it's it's good to hear. Like you've been obviously going. You're a big soccer fan, Man United, Man United in particular. Mm. How would you compare and contrast the atmosphere of like a footy game to these games that you've gone to? Because you've gone to like yes, three different leagues there. Yeah, like it's doesn't compare the um atmosphere that you experience in a game of European or United Kingdom football. United Kingdom isn't in the EU anymore, but like it is nothing like the AFL. I will always say AFL is the best ball sport in the world. Um, most exciting, most action-packed. Um, but in terms of the atmosphere, the atmosphere in the AFL, it's so fa like it is completely family orientated that like the passion gets sucked out of it a bit, I think. Um, which is, yeah, a massive part of why I love football over here is because of the atmosphere. As you know, when you went to Old Trafford to watch United versus Liverpool, it's just like every game that you go to is an experience that you'll never forget. Just like a standard Saturday afternoon league game that these people get to go to every week. It's like, it's like a religion for these people. Like they go to church and sing hymns, but the hymns are, you're getting sacked in the morning in the case of Southampton. Um, so yeah, uh, the sport, I, I, I enjoy it. It's not for everyone, uh, soccer or football. Um, AFL is definitely more entertaining Soccer is more skillful though. I'd say like the Premier League, it's the most skillful league of any sport in the world because they are like the top 0.1% of the top 1%. So yeah, hope That's that true. answers your question. 
Yeah, yeah. I guess like from an atmosphere standpoint, that it blew me away. As you said, I went to um, Old Trafford. I was in Manchester. It happened to be that weekend, and Liverpool were playing Man United. So it's you know people might not realize more people watch this game, this like home and away fixture. More more people watch that than the Super Bowl. Um, mm-hmm. which obviously just passed and everyone's talking about the Super Bowl it's, it's hard to get your head around how big of an event it actually scary, was and I happened to be in yeah. exactly I happened to be in town for it and uh, yeah book tickets it, it cost me like 500 bucks but I was yeah. like you know screw it I'm um, I'm only here once maybe and uh, the, uh, I just <laughs> you know pulled, pulled the trigger and um, it was just an unbelievable experience hey like so we got there late I got to the gate and for some reason, because of some protest um, that were processing blazes the Blazers, yeah. yeah, so for some reason, they just shut one gate to the entire stadium and it just happened to be mine. And they did. They said, well, you know, we'll let you in at the start of the game. They let us in like 15 minutes in to the game and we were all just absolutely fuming. And, you know, by the time we got in, uh, it sucked to miss the start of the game, but the, the crowd was going nuts and... There was this weird moment where I had to find my seat and it, it's not not like a n- really new stadium, so it's kind of cramped. And I was looking around and the crowd was so loud and so intimidating that I actually felt under pressure when I was trying to find my seat. I was like, <laughs> fuck, fuck. It was a weird yeah. phenomenon where I, like nobody was looking at me, but I, it, because the crowd was so electric and it was so hostile, it, it was, yeah, it was a weird experience. And I eventually found my seat. And th- the thing that struck me as well is how loud the crowd is for the whole 90 minutes like mm-hmm. obviously it helped the man united with winning the game and it was you know against their arch rival but um the chanting goes for the full 90 minutes it never stops yeah. there's an afl you, you know you get stoppages on the wing and, the, and the, it goes pretty quiet and then you know roars when there's a goal and then it chills out the, the premier league's mm-hmm. different man and I, yeah. admit, I know i went to the biggest game in the world but that struck me um and i, I imagine like you felt fans, similar yeah i feel like the fans are more knowledgeable because like the lifestyle over here is a lot different like because the weather's shit a lot of the time there's obviously like a lot of societal unrest over here which i i don't really it doesn't really affect me too much but like football is a lot of people's everything so they watch every yeah. game they watch every interview of like the players like they are fully up to date they completely know the football club they live and breathe it say so they, they ride every challenge every touch of the ball they are like so intently watching like when uh when there's like a build up to a goal like if a player's running down the wing it's like go on whip it in like you feel like the crowd there's like a language of football that happens as the game happens like if there's a handball the whole crowd shouts handball it's a bit like holding the ball or whatever but like mm. i don't know like you can like sense a moment coming just from like the the build up of the atmosphere um true footy Soccer. yeah exactly <laughs> it, it's nuts like it is interesting how much more they seem to care about it there um and it's, it's just like psychologically you kind of get it like as humans we're kind of drawn to tribalism right mm. we don't really have that anymore so you, you football teams are very much a community and 100%. it's just amazing how much more committed to that they are in the uk like for anyone could be the, like the biggest fan here and and they might think oh yeah no we're we're the same in australia you're just really not like people yeah. are literally willing to go out and get beaten the shit out of at a game <laughs> like you see posts on facebook that get, become memes where players are like oh people are like let's meet up at this game let's have a let's have a brawl or, so, or something like that <laughs> you just don't see that in afl can um, i tell you about my uh encounter with the wolves fan i don't think so so yeah i went to southampton versus wolves and i was wearing my ajax scarf i'm gonna grab it real quick give me two seconds so I was wearing this, which is Ajax, wearing this Ajax, same colours as Southampton. And I just like had it around my neck, so I was like red and white. Wearing a parka, which is like sort of a hooliganish uh, fashion. Anyway, we come out the ground, I'm with my homie Archie. Um, we're just talking about the game, it was 2-1, it was a great game. I was like smiling, like, oh, sick, just been to my first Premier League game. And like, we were sort of in the same end as the away end, and all these Wolves fans come out. And I'm just like looking up, smiling, and these like... Like, bloke wearing a Stone Island fucking, um, like, a sweater, I suppose. Just, like, comes out. Looks like he's, like, coked up, drunk. He's like, um, are you fucking looking at me, mate? Are you fucking looking at me? Like, gets real aggressive and starts squaring up. And I was really? just smiling. I was like, nah, mate, I'm not looking at you. Are you fucking sure, bruv? I'm like, nah, mate. <laughs> I, I, just, I just, like, uh, sort of de-escalated the situation. And then he just kept singing, we've got Super Lopetegui. And, yeah, just walked off. Um, nice. But yeah, you can find 
conflict so easily at a game of English football mm. because yeah, as I said, there's people that hate their lives, love their football, and live and breathe it. So if they win a game, they're like, yeah, fuck these opposition fans. They're a bunch of mugs. Their team just lost. Or if they lose, they're like, fuck these opposition fans. They just beat us. Now I want to beat them. So yeah, yeah, there's de- definitely violence in English football. Um, it used to be a lot worse. I've done a podcast with the hooligan, believe it or not, who was also my uncle. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, good good podcast. Go check that out, Drizzy Young. Um, yeah, it's it's fascinating the psychology behind it because, as you say, like a lot of these people don't have a lot going on in their life because football over there, soccer, is traditionally you know more lower class, lower socioeconomic sport. Working um, class, yeah, yeah, that's right. Sorry, yeah, <laughs> sorry to say lower class. I meant working class, <laughs> um, and and therefore you know the that is their church, like you said, and it, it can be a great thing. Like I've reflected on it in my own life, like how sport can be. One of those rare things in life that you literally just feel pure ecstasy. Um, mm-hmm. Like how many things that influences your life, um, and don't say drugs, uh, that can make <laughs> you feel just like like an actual natural high like that um, of pure joy. Like there's not very many things um, that can do that. But when you also have the opposite end of the spectrum where people just lose their minds when they lose and mm. want to punch on, it's uh, it can be a bit of a dangerous thing. I was going to say exercise. Drewsy's Athlete Academy. Mental strength, <laughs> physical strength. All goes hand in hand. It does. It does. Yes. Great segue. Um, <laughs> we've probably milked the uh, the soccer content as much as possible. Um, let's take a talk a little bit about Drewsy's Athlete Academy. So um, let's strip it back bare bones. Um, how would you describe it to someone who has not heard of it, mate? It's your new business. Drewsy's Athlete Academy is an online service which can level up the performance of athletes with other programs for muscle bulking and gym beginners. So that, that's the... like elevator pitch i suppose so basically i provide an online service where athletes get access to an app or if they're doing a running program a training program which i've delivered to athletes for the last two and a half years so like guys that i've worked with at the state academy um guys like jed buzzlinger who's just got drafted that sort of crop um those sort of guys um are some people that i've trained so i'm trying to think of other ones like jacob van Royen, who plays for melbourne jed buzzlinger um, guys that are going to continue to come up through the, the state system, um, I have trained with to improve their performance. And now I'm sharing, uh, the knowledge and experience and with the results that I've previously had, I'm transferring it to people all around the world, really that, that want it. So, um, yeah, if you're an athlete looking to level up, um, it's like results based. I'm not just giving you some random push pull legs or, you know, some bro split, which is going to give you big muscles. Like if you're an athlete, you have to train like one, you have to do the right exercises. Your your whole training has to be around like improving performance. So like if you're, if you're playing on a Saturday, say, and you go into the gym and just do some random split that you've done for the last few years and like you're doing like 10 to 12 reps, what you don't really realize is like if you're training legs, you're breaking down your muscle to a point where you're going to be at risk for injury on the Saturday. So like all of my uh, programs that are tailored to athletes have like the game day in mind, the training schedule in mind, so that you're going to reduce the risk of injury whilst also increasing strength and boosting performance. So that's sort of the athlete side of it. I don't know if you want to expand on that before I talk about the other ones, but... No, it's good. Uh, keep going. Um, and then I've got gym beginner programs, which is something that I can obviously relate to a lot because, as you know, when I first met you, Jesse, or to be fair, I was just getting into the gym, but before I met you, all throughout high school, I was always the skinniest kid, like, not not even, like, exaggerating, I was smaller than the year nines when I was in year 12, I was, like, 46, 47 kilos throughout high school, um, like, you could literally just, like, lightly push me and I'd fall over, always feeling lethargic, always feeling tired, always just like wanting to be better, but I didn't know how. Um, and I just sort of felt sorry for myself all the time. I'm like, why do I feel like this? But then I started to just like dial in my habits, started getting eight hours of sleep first and foremost. And then I started training consistently. Um, and then, yeah, my life completely changed within the space of like sort of four or five months just with consistent training. Um, I was lucky that I had like a good personal trainer to start out with. Um, whereas where some people go wrong in the gym is they'll say, all right, I want to go to the gym. They just rock up and they're like, uh, okay, what do I do? I don't know anything about the human body. I don't know anything about training. And then within two, three weeks, because they don't know what they're doing, they just give up. So 
what my service for gym beginners entails is I'll write out every gym session for them with videos on there so you know what exercises you're doing um, and then these guys that sign up or girls that sign up can like send me videos of them doing it I can correct their form and just coach them through it um, and it is a 12-week service and I don't just do that to lock you in and take your money and run off like if you want to see results you have to commit for three months if you stop at two months you're not going to see results so I think three months is a good enough uh, sort of body of work to see results as a gym beginner um, so yeah I hope that sort of answers that one and then the same for muscle bulking the last few years I've been working on muscle bulking and I've learned a lot about uh, bodybuilding and stuff like that so there's also that there for people that go to the gym potentially don't know how to get the best out of their training in terms of muscle bulking um, I've done it, bruv. I've put on like 20 kilos in the last two years. So if you want to get hench, start out at the gym or an athlete, I've got you covered and I'll help you every step of the way. That's crazy. I do have a question, but uh, you, did you mention the running program as well? Because oh, yeah, what, you've, you've, what you've told me, that one's been pretty popular. A lot of people coming to you with a need to increase their stamina and it may not be like a prospective athlete um, based on what you told me. It, it may not be a guy who's trying to get drafted. It might just be a guy who's playing amateur football or basketball and they just want to you know, get better so that they can um, perform better on the court or field. Um, mm-hmm. Tell us yeah. about the running program. Yeah, so I've had a lot of guys that have sort of come to me and said like, Look, I'm not playing football this year, but I might sort of play like, I don't know, like a -a five-a-side or like smaller scale uh, competition, whether it's basketball or um, what do they call it? Like um, like touch football. I'm not sure what it's called, but that that sort of stuff. Like, Mm. um, or they they might be aiming to play football next year and they just want to get a good fitness base so that when they start, they can hit the ground running, running with confidence that they've done the work leading into it. What I've seen as a strength and conditioning coach uh, in the like waffle system predominantly is kids that are trying to break through and they haven't got that base. So they show up to the 2K time trial, get a shit time. The coaches know straight away and you're pretty much already starting at a disadvantage because you don't have the fitness, you haven't imp- uh, impressed the coaches um, and you're not going to be able to run out four quarters and get contest to contest. So a lot of athletes uh, that don't know uh, how to train efficiently will just go on like a 10K run, which is good. You're going to improve your fitness like somewhat. But in football, how often are you running for 10K straight? Non-stop. So mm. I've got... Uh, a running program available which is actually the cheapest program available on my website um, where it's you can do a nine week program or a 12 week program which will increase your aerobic capacity increase your running power and then at the end uh, increase your sprint speed and all throughout the program there's drills that will improve uh, improve your acceleration change of direction agility and speed so that one's been popular just because yeah i think obviously as a footballer you're running a lot Um, but it's just about training effectively uh, taking out the guesswork with your running because like a lot of people put in the work like show up and put in the time but they're just not doing the right thing and then like you might as well show up do the right thing uh, to ensure that you're getting the results for the work you're putting in mm, that's cool so yeah you've given us a pretty good comprehensive look at like the the variety and the range um, of the the programs that you offer and all the different people that could potentially find value in what you do I kind of want to look, uh, go back a little bit to when you said you were a teenager and stuff like that you you referenced you know playing a lot of video games and and not feeling happy with yourself maybe disassociating a little bit uh, do you do you have any idea how you got to that point like why did you as a teenager sort of lean into that lifestyle because it's completely opposite to the way you are now yeah, well, it's it's quite funny. Like, my greatest weakness sort of became my greatest strength. Like, I was the weakest kid, and now I help the strong kids get stronger. Like, it, it's really weird how you find purpose in something that was a complete opposite to, to what I was at the time. So, what, what was your question? Like, how did I get to where I am now, I suppose? from where Yeah, I, I guess the, the, what I'm, the thread I'm kind of pulling at is, you know, we, we have a lot of young men that watch this podcast in particular um you know 18 to 35 male and i I dare say the stats are a little bit skewed they're probably more under 18s than that but Mm -hmm. you know it's such an easy path for you know a young guy um who doesn't know better to to delve into the game of video games you know they're they're not Mm -hmm. engaged at school they're they're not enjoying what they do they don't feel good about themselves and then they they look towards you know video games and those kind of activities because you know hey the dopamine makes it addictive and and, you know obviously it's fun i'm not knocking video games at all but we're seeing increasing amount of young men sort of delve further into that and withdraw a little bit 
um, and it can start at a pretty young age. So I, I guess I was trying to get a picture of your state of mind as to why as a young teenager you felt like you, why, why did you play video games? It just it was just fun and you just got hooked on it or were you, yeah, you're just not yeah, into it. I always, always played games, like, all throughout growing up, I loved my COD, like, I was literally such a gun at that game, no pun intended, there's guns in that game, um, <laughs> but, like, I would just play it all the time, because I was so good at it, same as FIFA, because it was all I did, so I was good at it. Were you but an MP5 or an AK-47? Um, M- UMP-45 Modern Warfare 2 is my favourite gun of all time with a silencer Spaz-12 is the secondary Marathon Pro anyway we, we could go on all day about I'm more of a ray gun. gun from Black Ops type operator but continue <laughs> yeah the COD Zombies um, but yeah like it just got to the point where I was like what are you doing like waking up at 12 o'clock or like after midday going to sleep at a stupid hour in the morning just playing games um, and I just wanted to take like responsibility of an accountability of where I was at in my life like I read a book which we sort of laugh about but like it's called discipline equals freedom and it basically says like the weights aren't going to lift themselves there's no shortcut to get to where you want to be how bad do you want to be there what sort of person do you want to be take responsibility and then there's no excuses for where you end up so like you can really take the guesswork out when you start to look at your habits um and where that can lead you to so yeah sort of after I finished uh, high school, it was just all about action. Like people live in their thoughts so much. Like I'd love to, I'd love to get strong. I'd love to have a six pack. I'd love to lose some body fat. I'd, I'm, I don't like where I am now. I'm not happy with myself in my own skin at the moment, and I'd love to get there. And the thing with like human psychology is you probably have these same thoughts every single day. Like 85 to 90 percent of the thoughts you had yesterday, you'll probably have again today. So, like, if you have that thought of, I want to get better, I'm not happy in the current state that I'm in, you're going to do nothing by just thinking about it. Even consuming content about it, you're not going to do anything. It's all about action. So, I just really started taking action and accountability, and it just come with uh, discipline and consistency. So, like, when you get off the Xbox, you've got nothing else. Like, when you're so addicted to it like I was, like, you turn off the console, and then what have you got? like nothing because you're just living in in a screen like exercising like your body starts to feel better you get these natural highs you start to get confidence in your body and it bleeds into every area of your life like once you get physical strength you get mental strength you get more confidence in your relationships with work um yeah business just everything like you'll be shocked how drastically your mental state changes when you're not exercising compared to when you do exercise and that's something that I know you found Jesse like when you're exercising you're a lot more motivated to to do things like this produce more content um and yeah like look at you now you've been exercising all summer long and you've been producing content and whatnot so I think yeah if you're a kid at home that isn't exercising you're not in a good mental space like look at your habits, look at what you're doing, because as I said at the start, you're not experiencing suffering, you're suffering experience. If day to day you're not happy, you need to change your experience. And I think exercise is a great way to do that because at the end of the day, humans are not designed to sit at a desk for nine hours a day looking at a screen. You gotta get your muscles working. Your muscles, there's lots of muscles in your body and they're catabolic organs, which basically means they operate best when they're broken down and then anabolically rebuilt up again. So treat your body right and your mind will uh, become a lot stronger. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's so much to unpack in this conversation. I like <laughs> yeah, bang on a lot about it. Like, I, like, I've been watching a lot of content on, in this kind of space. And, um, you know, one thing that's worth addressing is dopamine and how that works, right? And, um, you know, I know you watched Huberman and there may be other people who have watched um, Andrew Huber- Huberman and, um, and have an idea what he's talking about. But when you think about it, like when you're consuming so much video games um, and, you know, dare I say it, internet born, it's a taboo topic yeah, yeah exactly yeah so obviously how, how dopamine works is that you you start you get dopamine spikes and the the design uh, the platform of tiktok and uh, etc is designed to to get those spikes going mm-hmm. but what happens is then when you you have so many of these dopamine spikes you eventually 
it'll peak and then you'll you'll experience a trough below baseline so eventually you will actually just start feeling shit and this this is you know scientifically proven but it's not necessarily something that's detectable and you might not realize what's happening to you but i you know i went through a phase recently where i was smashing fifa 23 playing it every night and i was just like you know what i've worked hard today i've earned this Mm -hmm. and it was amazing how i started feeling shit and then on this point you said you know consuming content about a topic is not enough I would actually like to say that I think it's actually a really fucking good start. It if is a good you, start, but you have to act on it. Absolutely. But well, the point I want to make is that, you know, w- in the periods of my life where I'm going home and I'm playing FIFA 23 and then I am, um, you know, watching The Office until I fall asleep versus the times where I'm not, maybe I'm doing some sort of other pursuit, going to the gym. Uh, and then I'm listening to, you know, Chris Williamson. I'm listening to the hu- uh, Beat Human or, or, you know, Diary of a CEO. But, like, mm. listen to the more intellectually stimulating content Druzy Yarn more motivational content yeah Druzy Yarn True Footy Podcast um, <laughs> Footy Boys um, <laughs> shout out you cat um, yeah w- when you're watching that kind of content it does have an impact on your your subconscious and mm-hmm. your sub- subconscious thinking so I would recommend people to start there you know it's one, It's one. it may seem like a challenge to actually start the action but take that little micro step in between and you, you'll be amazed how how much of an effect it has i'd suggest just like watching content that you can relate to but like i, I didn't mean to say like if you watch the content you're not going to get any benefit out of it because of course you are it's going to no, no, it. get the the cogs ticking but mm. yeah like i related to that discipline equals freedom book at the time because i had nothing it was it was basically saying like where are you now are you happy no i'm not i could relate to that do you want to be somewhere better yes i do then you just have to show up. You have to put in the work. There's no mm. shortcut. Like, there's so many, like, dietary fads and, like, these, like, oh, are you feeling tired? Here's a tablet which will help. Like, no, it doesn't work like that. There is no shortcut. Happiness is something that has to be, or somewhat has to be earned to a degree. Um, and, yeah, mm. if you're going home, playing FIFA, watching The Office, your brain's just distracted all day from what's real. Like, if you just stopped, turned off The Office, turned off FIFA... What do you have? When you go to the gym, you're building up your, your body. Your body loves being broken down and built up, as I said. You come home, work mm-hmm. on YouTube. You've got a body of work to, to show for it. Like, what do you actually have to show for your time is a metric that not enough people uh, like, think about in their lives for me. And that's something that I definitely pride myself on is like, how much like productive work am I am I getting done in a day like did I just be a dead shit and sit on my phone all day or did I try to make moves and get the cogs turning on my business and it's no surprise that like now we're starting to get more clients through the door it's because I've been putting in the work every day I haven't been procrastinating with it and once you get into a rhythm like that's when motivation comes from motivation is fickle it's not always there you just have to show up and keep doing it but by showing up and seeing results your motivation will follow it's like action precedes motivation. It's not the other way around. It's not you get motivated, then you act. You act, and then you feel motivated by seeing the results. Mm. Yeah, that's very true. You know, another point just on like dopamine and happiness on those topics we touched on, and it does relate to getting back to, you know, Drew's Athlete Academy and the rest of the podcast. But one point I want to make is, you know, I've been doing some deep thinking over the last six months. Like, as you know, I had a bit of a like religion um rabbit I, I sort of fell down the rabbit hole of religion and more so just to explore it nah just kind of ultimately decided it wasn't for me but i was interested in the concept and mm-hmm. um and I, I see value in it while i still i'm not a believer personally but it kind of brought me onto this thinking of like what is the actual meaning of life right that is something that, that everyone's pondered deep, at some bro. point it is it is but uh, there is some i'm getting somewhere <laughs> um, i'm following probably previously in my life and i think this is a commonly held um conception is that it's it's about happiness and trying to maximize happiness right but then when you think about it and how dopamine works right if somebody is a pure pleasure seeker as i said they go into the same loop as before they they do tasks they consistently enjoy what then happens is the baseline for what is enjoyable gets way way higher to the point where it's unattainable you're chasing dopamine, you're depleting it, you go through troughs, you start to feel like shit. And even, you know, I think Dan Bilzerian was saying it, somebody was telling me Dan Bilzerian said this, you might have said this, but uh, he basically says he just doesn't enjoy it. No, I think Dylan told me this. He said he can go out to dinner and be surrounded by 10 out of 10 girls and having the best food. And he's like, I'm still at a five. Mm-hmm. So my long-winded point here is if the life was about 
just maximizing happiness and pleasure seeking all the time. Why does the brain actively work against that? If you are pleasure seeking all the time, why does it work against you in the form of dopamine troughs? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the, con- the conclusion I ultimately came to is you need to balance your life with a degree of, you know, a shitload of hard work so that when you do find the things you enjoy and you seek dopamine rushes and, and, and spikes and stuff like that, you can actually enjoy them. Mm-hmm. And so th- what you need is a purpose and you know, for a lot of people that's fitness. And as you say, the benefit of investing in yourself is that it will give you benefits. And it's hard to explain to people why you feel much better when you feel fit and strong. Um, but it's definitely true. And um, I'd say for men, but I think it's it's also true of women. But it's one of those things that once you start to feel fit, it, it just impacts the rest of your life, the, mm-hmm. the way other people perceive you, your level of confidence. And I feel like it's something you have to get a bit of a taste of to really exp- um, Yeah understand that feeling and you, obviously you've gone through that as well and I, I was a skinny kid too I maybe wasn't as light as you were but I was a skinny rat as a teenager and then you know 10 years later I'm a moderately skinny rat now <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Um, it, it's it's spot on what you just said though like you can't have the pleasure without the suffering the yin without the yang you've got to you got to have one to have the other like you can't eat 10 donuts and not burn it off and then feel good about yourself. It's impossible. As soon as you finish the donuts, mm. you feel shit. If you go to the gym mm. and then you get the reward, you've gone through the suffering, so you're you're not okay to eat the 10 donuts, but you get what I'm saying. Like, I feel like everything in life should be earned. If you're just, like, think of this analogy, like, you're some uh, rich kid born into wealth, never work a day in your life, you're given absolutely everything. You want a Ferrari? You got a Ferrari. You want a trip to Ibiza? You've got a trip to Ibiza. There's no way that kid's going to be happy his whole life because nothing's ever going to be enough. People are happy that earn what they've got. And you, that's what I was saying before. You, you can't, you, no one is just given happiness. You can't buy happiness. Mm-hmm. People say it all the time. Money does not buy happiness. So yeah, you definitely have to have that balance. Um, yeah, again, so many so many points to unpack with what you said, but yeah. dopamine's mm. a massive one. So to the kids out there that are, that are listening, just like when you feel shit and you don't know why, I would look at your habits, how you're spending your time. Are you on TikTok? Like look at your phone. Phone time is a massive one. If you're on your phone for more than four or five hours a day, it's going to be very hard to be happy. Personally, I find. Um, mm-hmm. Are you like on Snapchat all the time? Snapchat was a massive one for me that just like fucked with my head all the time because like I was waiting for that notification, that little dopamine spike. Then I'd go on there and it'd just be like a picture of some bird that I was trying to chat up's head. And I was like, is this really what I'm trying to pursue? Like it's meaningless. If you delete Snapchat and other social medias, realize what people will hit you up as well. Like life is a game of realizing what is real and what is not, what is important and what is not what eggs you like what baskets do you want to put your eggs into because there's a Mm. lot of plants that you're watering like that's another analogy that (laughs) that wouldn't have made sense (laughs) like sort of give time to what will give you uh time back or like value back give value to what you'll get value back from so going to the gym you'll get value back from in the terms of physical and mental strength um going on tiktok for five hours a day you're gonna get nothing back for that and it's gonna mess with your dopamine so if you truly want like this happiness that me and Jesse are talking about, you're not going to get it from things that aren't going to give you any value back. Everything's a, like a trade-off in terms of value. I just made that up on the spot, bro, but we're going to roll with it. That was good. No, yeah, I, I fell for it. Um, yeah, it was good. Like, I, 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 we were, I don't want to go on another tangent because we got other shit to talk about as well. Um, I'll keep but it rolling, bro. We'll go for an hour and a half, two hours. I don't care. This is sick. <laughs> The, the, the point you made about Snapchat's a really, really good one. So um, in my experience, right, in conversations with girls, right, where I'm, not that there's many in my life, but on Snapchat, right, I found that it was so difficult to ignore the notification of a Snapchat because you there's the mystery of you don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. And then you'd open it and it would just be like, yeah, or hey, <laughs> yeah. or something like that. But when I started talking to the same person on Messenger, and I could see the one word answers. <laughs> um, 
it, it, I lost like a lot of that inclination to Mystery. be checking my phone constantly. And it's just amazing how the change of app made that much of a difference to me. It's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Anyway, enough about that point. I just think that's a really good point you make about Snapchat. I guess the way to sum up the dopamine thing, right, is... And the Huberman says this. I'm taking it straight out of his, uh, his um, guidebooks. Um, he says that, um, you know, everything releases dopamine, right? Sex with your partner, um, going for a run, exercise, going to the gym will release dopamine. So how do you balance all of that? Dopamine's not bad, but you balance your life through pivoting towards um, those dopamine rushes or those activities that require some sort of discipline or self-organization. And as you said, will pay off in some way. So it's an investment in yourself and there will be hard work. And, and we're really talking about Drew's Athlete Academy here, investing in yourself as a young man, whether you want to be an athlete who you know takes his game to the next level, achieve your full potential, or you're just a young guy who doesn't really have any direction, or, uh, particularly in the gym, or doesn't really know where to go. Building yourself up and investing in yourself is a great start. Two things there. So I want to talk about uh, investing in yourself, secondly. But firstly, you're talking about uh, everything re- releasing dopamine. So some people may be familiar with the phrase like gratification, instant gratification versus mm. delayed gratification. So when I would go to uni last year, I lived the same day every day. So I'd go to uni, go to the gym, have a sauna and a cold shower, right? Typically, you don't want to sit in a room that's like close to 55, 60 degrees. I don't even know how hot it is. Maybe even more than that. Like, however hot a sauna is, it's hot. You're sweating and you get to the point where you're so uncomfortable that you have to get out. After that, I'd follow that up with a cold shower. No one wants to go into a cold shower in the middle of winter. Like, these are things that your body, like your comfort zone is just like, no, I don't want to do that. Every single day, the highlight of my day was getting out of the cold shower after a sauna the natural high that you get from that, from delaying the gratification, like you go to the gym, you put in hard work, you sit in the sauna when you don't want to sit in the sauna and then you go into a cold shower when you don't want to go into a cold shower. You delay, delay, delay the gratification and then you get this massive spike. I think it's in your serotonin. Maybe it is in your dopamine. So like these things where you like, you might have to put into work. Like right now, Drewsy's Athlete Academy, I'm delaying the gratification of like going out and partying and uh, celebrating nothing because I, I haven't got anything to celebrate. Like if I wanted to go out and party just to get that instant high, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a functioning business. So I put in the graft, I delay the gratification to try to get this business rolling and then I can get the, the gratification later on when I've had a good week or I've had a good month and I can go and celebrate it and like be happy with what I've achieved. So that, that's delayed gratification. That's what you want. That That's the good stuff. And then instant gratification is all those things that we we're talking about. TikTok, um, porn feels good. Like when when you think of something and it sounds like a good idea straight away, that's instant gratification. If I watch porn, if I go on TikTok, yeah, that's a good idea. If I vape, um, what else have we got? Just think things like that. Eating like junk food at the time it seems like such a good idea in your mind because your mind seeks comfort. It wants those things. It wants that rush of sugar. Um, but long term, it's empty. It's not going to lead you to anything at all. So, deciphering what is instant gratification and delayed gratification is a good start uh, for people that are sort of a little bit lost at the moment. Start to think of your actions. Is this going to benefit me tomorrow, the next day, the next day? Gym? Yes. TikTok? No. So, just just an example. The second point was uh, investment in yourself. Like, it's easy for me to say because this is my business and I benefit from the profits that the business generates. But like this stuff that people sell, that online coaches sell, that PTs sell, like if you genuinely commit to it, it will change your life. And I I don't say that like, I'm not just throwing that out there. Like you will be shocked in three months how drastically your life will change with discipline, routine, structure, accountability with exercise. Um, and the thing is as well, like some of my programs are like 25 bucks a week. My most expensive program, 39.99 Australian. How much money do people spend on junk food, alcohol, vapes, a night out, for example, let's say we're going to Metro's Jesse, which we've done one or two times, right? We're having pre's, pre drinks, you're paying 30 bucks, right? We get an Uber to Metro's 15 bucks each. So what's that? That's 45 bucks that I've already spent. 
We go to Metro's, you pay entry, that's 20 bucks. So we're already up to, what, 65. Couple of drinks at Metro's, you're already up to 85 bucks. Maybe a third, let's say we're at 90. We've got to buy 15 a 15 nice- bucks for the photo booth. Yeah, 15 bucks on a photo booth because we, we love a photo. Um, <laughs> and they're expensive for some Jesse reason. Jesse <laughs> sees a nice, nice girl on the dance floor. He wants to... Two wants grand. To- <laughs> <laughs> Straight there and then. Make it rain on her. <laughs> Nah, um, that's a joke. That's you want to buy her a drink? Look, you're going home. You're spending two hundred bucks, easy, one hundred fifty, easy on a night out. But when it comes to investing in yourself, a cheeky twenty five, thirty bucks, people go, "Ooh, I don't want to do that." People would rather pay money to kill themselves with vaping, drinking, and eating junk food than they would to invest in themselves. And like, it's easy for me to say because they're like, "Oh, he just wants me to buy his program, bro." I'm going to sell programs anyway. It's like, if you want to invest in yourself and like the only barrier is the pay, it's like, well, look at what what else you're spending your money on. So invest mm. in yourself, pay for shit that's actually going to benefit your life. Absolutely. I, I think, you yeah, you touched on some really, really good points there and you're right in all of it. I guess I, it is important to add the caveat that we're not saying embrace the monk lifestyle that is not necessary and, and it's unrealistic like if we're talking to 18 to 34 year old blokes uh, or younger it, you know why the fuck would they want to completely quit playing cod and fifa like i i wouldn't and frankly don't i've still got it mm-hmm. um you're still going to go out and enjoy your 20s with your mates on a night out but it is important to keep these concepts in mind the what you're giving up for what you're getting Mm-hmm. and balancing your life in an effective way you can hit the gym and be dedicated and build yourself and still go out you know i don't know once or twice a month and and you'll be able to balance your finances for a start mm-hmm. but you won't you won't ruin everything and soon soon as you get older and you experience enough of that lifestyle you'll you'll start to see which one is actually getting you the benefit for sure it's all about balance like too much of anything is bad like if you only exercise and only work like every day of the week like eventually you're going to burn out and be like, shit. Like, I've just worked mm. myself to the bone and I've now received no benefit. Lots of MMA mm. fighters love video games. They'll go to the gym, train their heart out. Guys like Sean O'Malley, uh, Jack Jenkins, who was just on the Jamal and Dylan show. These guys come home and play games, but they, they've earned that right to, like, rest and play FIFA or play whatever it is. So, like, mm. as you were saying before, too much of one thing, like, you're just going to want to crave more and more. Like, Dan Bilzerian, he's got all these tens sitting around him. Like, because he always does that. It just becomes, like, the norm. And, it like, mm. this is an extreme example, but drug users, they'll start on alcohol, they might go to weed, they abuse all them, they go, all right, cocaine's the next one. And then, two not enough cocaine all right now we're gonna to go to this one and and then it just goes mm. a downward spiral and like i've uh unfortunately had quite close encounters with people like this and seen them ruining their lives from chasing short-term highs so that's just a side point but um yeah mm. have balance I, like literally tonight it's friday night in england i'm here to travel i'm gonna go have some pints but i've worked every day this week to earn that i wouldn't have stopped on a wednesday and gone to the pub and obliterated myself or given up on my work and scrolled through TikTok. Like, mm. not that I, I want to earn <laughs> scrolling through TikTok and I don't use TikTok at all. Um, but you get my point. Absolutely. Yeah. I, you know, the, there's many reasons why I'm passionate about what you do, man, with the Jersey Athlete Academy. It's A, you know, you're my friend and you're launching a business. I'm going to support that. B, you give me a discount code, so uh, I do get a cut <laughs> if we make a sale. I'm putting that on the table, right? Everyone knows that. Yeah. But I'm worried. I'm worried about young men. I think the it's a topic I've been learning about a lot lately, and too many people, particularly in that 18 to 34 range, are withdrawing from society, mm-hmm. and they're going towards video games and internet porn primarily. It's mm-hmm. uh, we're making, painting a very simplistic um, picture of the landscape that is currently, but it is an ongoing problem. So they just people need to invest in themselves. I'm, I'm really into making a, a young man in particular, because I'm speaking to a ma- mostly male audience, building yourself up to a standard that you can be proud of. I think that is something that you can do through many aspects of life, but fitness is a great example of that. And speaking as, to someone like yourself who has gone from being that kid to someone who is you know, thriving, you've, you've got your own business, um, and you know, you're qualified. You actually know what you're talking about. You are you are literally thriving. So, uh, I think I think it's a great service that you provide. And 
I'm honestly um, stoked that, you know, people are jumping on board. You, it's, it's been going well so far and, and people are getting a lot out of the program. So um, you'd have to be happy with how it's going so far. I am. I am. And that's the main thing. Like people always say, like, find purpose in life. And I'm lucky that I have mm. found my purpose at such a sort of young age, 21. Like my purpose is to help people like me where I was when I was 17, 18, literally mm. like not not depressed, but experiencing I was suffering experience, as I was saying before. Like, my experience was waking up in the middle of the day, eating junk food, playing Xbox, not exercising. That, that is not a way to live. So, like, my purpose is to now take those kids from where I was and bring them out of the gutter and show them, like, this is the way. Like, as you said, the world right now for young men, like, it's, it's pretty grim. Just And it's not even their own fault. It's just the way that society's set up now. Everyone has a phone. Everyone has access to porn everyone's on tiktok trying to get entertained like social media has completely removed well not completely but probably 90 to yeah 90 percent of the social dynamic which was around in the 90s and 80s where people would just go out and socialize and have that human connection it's gone and boys these days feel lonely like they don't have Mm. they don't have that social connection with their mates because it's all on their phone it's everyone on social media trying to show a version of themselves that they want the world to see rather than like people actually getting to know someone so yeah Mm. no i I worry for the youth but at the same time like i also do this for athletes like i've trained athletes that is my passion i've always loved sport um and i think back to like all of the the perth demons boys that i trained and like when i started there the amount of love they showed me like lots of them watched my videos when they showed up like when we all showed up to the first training session, they knew who I was and like just being able to improve their performance and um, see their improvements in 2k results and like seeing like a a kid like Ali, for example, um, who's like in all of the promo videos, um, taking that big mark and moving around the agility pole. His goal was to make the under 16 state side and he achieved that goal. So it's like things like that, helping kids uh, realize their own potential in a nutshell is uh, why I do it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's that I think that's the key that unlocks everything is finding a purpose. And I think the important thing to remember with, with finding a purpose is that you don't have to find one big purpose for your entire life that is going to encapsulate the next 50 years of your life. And then once you've done, you, you're like, oh, that's it. Because that's dangerous as well. You don't want to yeah. achieve your purpose and then have nothing. You just need to find something in the short term, right? So your current pur- purpose is to build yourself up into the best version of yourself you can be. Your, your current purpose might be finish your studies and make your family proud and earn as much as you can to provide for your future family. Your, your purpose might be, um, I don't know, learning another language so you can live in another country. There's, it's very mm-hmm. subjective what a purpose is. Um, and, and to all the young men out there, it's I think personal opinion, that is the key to, to turning it around if, you know, if you're feeling shit. So in the last few years, Jesse, what would you would you say you personally lacked purpose? Like you were sort of going through the motions a bit. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, it, it hasn't been a great couple of years for me personally um, because uh, you know in twenty twenty one I probably had a purpose. It was to to build two true footy because I worked like a fucking animal um, <laughs> in twenty twenty one. And when twenty twenty two rolled around. I completely lost interest in it. And I think what it was is I lost faith in the, the what the purpose actually was. I didn't really didn't really care about making True Footy a career anymore. And I think that that the absence of that faith or the absence of the belief that that was the right thing to do put me in a bit of a depression, to be completely honest. And mm. work was going well. And I'm, I, I've, I've loved my job at Bunnings. And that became a bit of a purpose for a while. But yeah, I mean, I think... As, as men, to be honest, like one thing that we we need is conquest. Um, mm. Not not sexual conquest necessarily, but we, we need to be striving for something. Like roadscape, cow hides. That, well, that is change. exactly what, that is exactly why people, what one of the appealing things about video games is because you can find conquest in a much more accessible way. Like you are beating something, you're claiming it in a sense. Mm. So long story short, uh, your question was, did I lose purpose? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think I've kind of, I've got a, a short to medium term one now, and maybe we can deviate into a little bit about um, the future of this channel and I guess myself. So what I'm alluding to, Drew, is that I can finally say publicly that I've quit my job and I am going to be moving to the UK. Now, I want to say something really quickly. This has nothing to do with you. As much as I love oh, you, piss I'm off. not following you across the country to be with you, okay? Across the world, mate. 
sorry, yeah, across the world. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is something that I've been thinking about since August of last year. Um, you know, I traveled to the Europe, uh, caught up with some mates. Obviously, I haven't been having a great time in Perth I, for a variety of reasons I don't have time to get into now. But uh, I think my, my journey, I've just ticked over 10 years living in Australia and it's time for something new. And I've decided that in April, I'm going to be based uh, in America for a month and then and then in England. And that will, the short-term goal at the moment is to spend that time until I get a job that actually pays the bills. I'm going to be fully invested in True Footy. This is going to be my primary source of income. I'm going to be making a lot more content. Um, and, you know, depending on how that goes, that might be my job from now on. Mm-hmm. How exciting, mate. How cool is that? A couple podcasts that sounded sincere. a few years you ago. <laughs> no, it is. It is. I, I'm fucking stoked for you because honestly, at points in the last two years, I was like, Jesse's done. Like, I'd speak to Caden. I'd be like, is, is Jesse going to like ride this wave with us? Or like, you know, <laughs> what, what's happening here? Um, so yeah, the fact that you're going all in on it. Because I, I honestly thought like in the last few years, you probably would have just like, if the opportunity arose in that time... Like, if you found someone, you would have just settled down in Perth and just worked at Bunnings and been content with that. But, like, I don't know. As I said, last six weeks, his fire's been lit up under your ass and you're, yeah, starting to see the um, value that your channel holds and I'm sure more opportunities are going to keep coming your way. Um, and, yeah, having you over here, it's going to be a lot of fun. No metros, but we got AB for now. Yeah, true. Business lunch in Ibiza. <laughs> we'll charge the chicken wings to the expense account. Um, yeah, so it's gonna be it's gonna be a different. Like, how weird is it to think that the time where I actually launch myself fully into True Footy, I'm gonna be based in the UK. <laughs> There's something really ironic about that. Um, but I'm uh, to be honest with you, I'm I'm really excited about having the fear. So I've been very comfortable the last couple of years. I had a great job. Really enjoyed it. To be honest, that has been the best part of my life. And that's part of the reason, you know, a big part of the reason I'm going is because, you know, when the best part of your life is a a retail job, then it's time to think about, you know, changing up your priorities. But um, I'm excited about what it's going to bring out of me as a man who suddenly needs to put food food on the table. It'll light me up like a Bunsen burner um, (laughs) right under my ass. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued to see what I'll do in that situation. I'm going to have to find, you know, more streams of revenue. Uh, there's opportunities around the corner. I, I, I can't mention one of them yet, but it, as though manifestation is a real thing, I got an email the other day, which is a potentially exciting opportunity for the channel as well. So um, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be very, very different. Um, I'm going to be in a different time zone, um, but we're going to be, you know, a train right away from each other. Yeah. Fun. As your attention goes, Jesse, so shall you become. When you want True Footy to succeed, it will succeed. When I want athlete, my Athlete Academy to succeed, it will succeed. It just takes the reps every day, putting in the work. And, uh, yeah, we've seen that on YouTube. It can happen. Look at Caden. Look at Blue, Blue Abroad. They're smashing it. And you're no different, mate. You've got the platform. It's going to be exciting. I'm going to be posting more on True Footy. That's going to be where most of my footy content is. Um, I, well, I was going to mention that. So it's it's kind of a merger. Like you're still going to be uploading your content, but you are obviously pivoting away from AFL. You're, like, you're doing your travel vlogs. You, you're um, more focused on, um, I guess, your life in general and fitness and um, you know mindset stuff we, you've talked about as well. Um, but you are now going to be officially part of True Footy and uploading on the channel. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Can't wait. I think I... Um on my channel, it's going to be more part-time because my business is now my full-time thing. Yeah. So, like, I'm over here. I'm having to make money. My channel isn't as profitable as yours is currently. I sit at, what, 8,400 and something subs. You're almost at 20K. Get True Footy to 20K! That'll happen soon. Um, but, yeah, like, I'm going to be doing like sort of one video a week because that's all really my time permits at the moment whilst running my business. I'm going to have plenty of content coming out from like my business as well, like on Instagram, follow it up at Druzy's at Athlete Academy on Instagram. Um, but yeah, like I, I want to make videos that I would enjoy to watch. So for example, that last Southampton vlog, uh, the Ajax vlog, Celtic vlog, travel vlogs, all those sorts of things. Um, and potentially network over here in the YouTube scene a little bit and see where that leads me. Um, and then, yeah, on your channel, 
post AFL videos where I can um, because I still love the AFL, as I said, best ball sport in the world. Um, And I'm half decent if I don't mind tooting my own horn at covering the league as you are. So, um, Mm. yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun. And to to talk on your one of the points you raised earlier, like it's sink or swim. Like it's like you have to fully commit wholeheartedly to this and that that's what I've done as well like moving over here like obviously I have a little bit more security because I can like live with my family and I've got a roof over my head no matter what um Mm. but like you find so much character from moving to the other side of the world and relying on yourself more and getting out of your comfort zone here's a cheesy quote for you progress is only made outside of the comfort zone we're talking about dopamine and stuff earlier if you sit in your comfort zone Mm. no progress um so yeah True Footy Enterprises Party Limited Drewsies Athlete Academy merge question mark sort of it's going to be a lot of fun <laughs> yeah exactly man and on that point I have lived relent- relentlessly in my comfort zone for the last two years and I'm excited to see how, what that fear sort of incites in me and the response I'll have that, that's the part I'm excited about um, obviously as you know like I haven't really in- tried too hard on true footy for the last 12 months i mean let's say from 2021 because 2021 i did fucking try Mm -hmm. um but i am interested to see what i do next and i say that without even really knowing yet and my mindset as well is like if this fails it's okay like i Mm -hmm. i have savings i can come back to australia it's 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 not the end of the world but uh yeah it's going to be a big year it's going to be yeah. it's, it's going to be a working holiday as a youtuber yeah another real cheesy saying is follow your dreams you always hear people say follow your dreams never give up it's a cheesy saying that people will just like like that it just goes through one ear and out the other oh yeah follow your dreams but that's exactly what we're doing here jesse we're going all in baby yeah yeah i mean i think where people get caught up with that sometimes is is like what are your dreams and I think uh, our generation is a little bit, we are the generation or maybe even the one before us. And <laughs> to be honest, I'm a different generation to you, but I'd say like the, the more mo- modern generations where it's sold this idea of you can be special, you can go and achieve your mm-hmm. dreams. And then a lot of people never fucking figure it out. Mm-hmm. So I guess to that point, the one thing I'd add is, you know, you don't have to nail your dream. You don't have to like pick a dream and stick to it. Mm. Just be focused in the pursuit of short-term goals. Yeah. See where it takes you. Do something that, in, that you know, you... Uh, it has a return on investment to some extent um, and then you just see where you end up and then pivot um, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. 100%. hate to keep bringing it back to me and it sounds like I'm egotistical and just love talking about myself but I can guarantee you I'm not that sort of person. This you time last... <laughs> this time last year I was at uni um, sort of thinking I'd be starting a PhD like this time um, like where I am now um, I, I had no idea like that I would be running a business that I'd be um, yeah trying to network in the YouTube scene over here and I'd be traveling Europe but I'm just mm. following as you said those short-term goals I have no idea what my life's going to look like this time next year I could be back in Australia I could be living up in Manchester I could be I could be living in Brooklyn we'll see we'll see <laughs> we, we, I could be in Melbourne like anything could happen I could be dead mate like literally, that's another thing. Uh, People, it's kind of fucked up. It is fucked up, but it could absolutely happen. I could go to walk to work today, and I could get hit by a car that comes falls from the sky. Probably not, but hopefully not. But like people take life for granted as well. People expect that like you are owed something, but like shit can hit the fan like that. Like at at the blink of an eye, your whole world can get tipped on its head. So like enjoy every day as it comes because you don't know what's going to happen. If you stay on the path for your goals and don't die, you never know what can happen. So, mm. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, mate, I think I think it's been a good chat. I think we should probably wrap it up. So now about the football. Uh, Who's going to win the derby? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, West Coast, obviously. Yeah, we didn't even have time for that. To be honest with you, when I flicked the camera on, I thought, I thought we're going to be struggling to get 25 minutes out of this. Um, and here we are like an hour and five minutes in or whatever. I could go for another 45. Um, but it's been a good chat and I, I, I hope that people, I hope somebody took something out of it. Um, mm. You know, we're not the most like qualified people, or at least me, to speak on some of these topics. But, uh, you know, that's the, that's the sort of content I've been surrounding myself in. Um, and I, I feel way better than I did six months ago. Like since I got back from Europe to now, um, it's unrecognizable. 
Mm-hmm. And, I, and I think I've been told that people can see the difference in me already. And mm-hmm. what people need is, is a pursuit. That's what young men need. I think people in general, but, um, but I think young men in particular, um, you need a pursuit and you need something to look forward to. Um, and you just have to take some risks and get out of your comfort zone and invest in yourself. So, 100%. It's been really and good, Drew. Look, if we've just talked about that for the last what, hour, I would be mm. shocked if people listen to that and it doesn't resonate. So, I, th- I think this yeah, has been one so. of the better podcasts we've done, mate. Well done. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, mate. It was not planned at all. I literally didn't expect <laughs> to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Stuff, I asked you at the start. Like, I was like, so what are we talking about? And you're like, oh, fuck, nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I literally, I wrote down like five notes. What, talk about D- Drewsy's Athlete Academy was one of the points. <laughs> <laughs> nah, Drewsy's Athlete mate. Academy, so, football, intro, yeah. Yeah, we didn't even cover those dot points. Um, <laughs> intro, yeah. Now that's it, mate. Um, uh, before we round out, just tell everyone where we can find you in your business and, and what to expect from you in the coming weeks. Coming weeks? Well, to be fair, I'm just running my business now. So um, if you want to get involved... Uh, just DM me on Instagram. Uh, DM me podcast. That's the easiest way. Uh, either to mm. at underscore Druzy or at Druzy dot Athlete Academy. Please put my uh, usernames in the description, Jesse. Um, and if you're sold and you want to just commit straight away, you can just go to the website, Druzy's Athlete Academy, uh, www.druzy'sathleteacademy.com. Um, but the easiest way, if you have any questions, just message me on Instagram. I'm doing free video consults as well. So... Yeah, that's the easiest way. I'm just going to continue to run my business um, with yours and Gubbs's help. Got UCAT on board now as well with some things. So, yeah, we're making a, a nice little group of homies that are trying to get the best out of our lives. <laughs> yep, exactly. What are you, what are you yeah, going to be up to, Jesse? Mate, I'm moving to England. <laughs> i got to get my wisdom teeth out. I've got to make content for the new season. I've got to move house. I've got to whittle down my life in this entire apartment to two pieces of luggage. I'm going to be fucking real busy. I've also got stock tape next week. <laughs> um, so, mate, oh, it's, it's chaos, but I'm thriving in the chaos at the moment. Um, Hell yeah. And You'll I hope through. that people take something from this um, and a little bit of what we talk, and hopefully if they're feeling like I was, hopefully they can start to feel closer to what I'm feeling right now. So, mm. It Hell be yeah. But thank you for your time, mate. Um, people are going to hear from you and see from you, you know, more on your channel and, and obviously on True Footy as well. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, good luck with it all and I'll see you in Ibiza. Hell yeah. See you at Metro's, buddy. <laughs> I hope they have a Metro's in Ibiza. <laughs> Is that all it? Right. Yeah, thanks for listening, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Let's go. Drew's Athlete Academy, baby, sign up today. Woo! Nah. Ah, I'm going to edit that out.